Good afternoon, uh, everyone, and welcome to this uh, public debriefing of the, the third BEREC plenary meeting of the year, BEREC plenary meeting number 48. And uh, my name is Michel Ambelingen, BEREC Chair 2021, 20, uh, and it's a real pleasure to have you in this room, but also uh, online. And this is, of course, a, a hybrid uh, debriefing we are, we are doing uh, today. We had also our first uh, hybrid plenary meeting last uh, week in Dubrovnik, Croatia, hosted by our colleagues uh, from uh, ACOM, um, Croatian uh, regulator, very well uh, organized. So it was uh, also a real pleasure to, to reconnect with uh, our, our BEREC uh, colleagues after more than uh, one and a half uh, year. Uh, after the, the, the last physical plenary meeting we held in, in, in Belgrade uh, one and a half year um, ago. So uh, we know that meeting in, in person is, is real, really good for, for enabling free flow of um, ideas and this stimulating also um, al alignment. So, of course, after one and a half year, it's normal that there are newcomers uh, in the board of uh, regulator, and so we were very pleased to welcome them in uh, in person uh, as well, and to get to know of uh, of each other. But before the plenary meeting, we organized a so-called four lateral summit. This is um, something we organized on a, on a hybrid mode uh, as well with our counterparts of Eastern countries from EPIREG e e um, organization with our um, colleagues from Central and Latin America um, renewed in the um, re regulatory uh, organization and with uh, the regulators of countries um, around the Mediterranean Sea, the so-called uh, emerged was, of course, the uh, occasion to, to share views and ideas after this uh, pandemic situation where um, the, the, um, the importance of uh, the growing demand for um, high quality digital connections have never been so, so, uh, so important, putting a real connectivity uh, at the forefront of our agenda and uh, the priorities uh, as well. And, and of course, we, we discussed uh, international, international cooperation um, uh, as well. So, but as you can see, I'm not alone today and I'm very pleased to be joined by my estimated colleagues and we uh, Sipkes, who is incoming chair, will be um, Berek chair uh, next year in 2022. And in a few moments, she will give you an, an overview of the, the, the draft work program for uh, for next year. And, uh, and also two of the, the co-chair up uh, with me, uh, Veronique and, and Klaus, uh, welcome to, to, to all of you. Uh, before um, going on the, um, the next slides, um, just let me tell you that uh, P3 is also an important meeting for uh, elections. And it's my pleasure to announce you that we have um, a chair for a barrack chair for 2023. This is our um, estimated colleague um, Konstantinos Marcelos, who is the, the president of the uh, Hellenic Telecommunications and Post Commission, the EET, the Greek uh, regulator, and will be uh, vice chair in 2022 to assist uh, Anne Marie uh, as well. We, we have also uh, agreed to uh, elect two additional. Um, co um, vice chairs. Um, first of all, uh, our, our colleague uh, Klaus Steinmauer from uh, Austria, RTR Austria, and uh, Emmanuel Gabla from RCEP uh, France as well. And uh, a representative of the participants uh, of um, countries uh, without regulated without voting rights. And this is uh, our colleagues from ENCOM Norway, Mr. Paul Wien uh, Espen, uh, who's been uh, elected. So, uh, congratulations to all of them again. It's a, a real pleasure, and I'm re really looking forward to uh, working with all of you and inclusive Anne-Marie, of course, for, first of all. But uh, today uh, we will have um, on, on the agenda, I think that, um, yes, the, um, the, the slide will, will, will come. Uh, of course, uh, Anne-Marie will uh, give you 
uh, an update on, on the preparation of the work program for, uh, for next uh, year. We'll uh, also have um, different uh, items uh, which will be um, uh, pre presented, uh, a report we have uh, issued on um, uh, how to handle third uh, party payment charges mo on mobile phone uh, bills. And then um, the, the, the co-chairs of uh, Open Internet Working Group will present the report on the implementation of the Open Internet Regulation and also uh, we'll update you on the um, ongoing discussions regarding the uh, recent uh, judgments of the Court of Justice uh, about uh, open internet uh, issues and zero uh, rating. Um, then, uh, after this first part, we will open a QA uh, session. We will have a second part as well uh, with um, another working group, for the um, market and uh, uh, analysis, uh, economic analysis uh, working group uh, will uh, present as a draft report on the regulatory treatment for fixed and mobile uh, backhaul. And this document is um, open for public consultation uh, as well. And uh, our final report on the ex ante regulation of uh, digital uh, gatekeepers uh, published uh, today, if I'm if I'm right, and and so um, I I have to, to thank all the contributors to this. It was really um, uh, useful for us to have your uh, your feedback during the the public uh, consultation, and this has led to a more qualitative report that we have uh, now. And uh, lastly, uh, our um, co-chair will uh, of the other. Uh, will, working group will present a work regarding the harmonized definitions for indicators regarding uh, over-the-top services relevant for uh, electronic communications service and again a second uh, q a uh, session but we also adopted uh, some of the documents you can see now on the slides which will not be presented uh, today the 27th barrack international roaming uh, benchmark data uh, report uh, with data from October to uh, 2020 to March 2021. The second BEREC uh, benchmark data report on intra-EU communication, uh, BEREC's mid-term strategy for international cooperation and uh, mid-term strategy for institutional cooperation. And also uh, we have appointed new co-chairs for uh, and user working group and sustainability group and you can find all those documents on the website uh, as well in addition to that we had um, some um, debriefing about the last state of play regarding the negotiations about the uh, new roaming uh, regulations preliminary conclusions on two uh, workshops uh, about 5g and uh, also discussions about two studies barracks commissions one on um, the um, sustainability, uh, so the effects on electronic communications on the environment, and, and the second about measures um, NRAs can uh, take in order to help close the digital uh, divide. On the next slide here, you'll, you'll find the dates of the public ongoing public consultations and the closing dates for um, the two um, documents. And so I'm very pleased to be joined today by the, the lead authors of um, th these several uh, documents. The, the other co-chairs will be uh, re joining us on, online. So um, before um, starting the presentation, just let me um, give you uh, some um, elements about the way you can interact if you want to ask questions during the Q&A uh, session and you are in the room, it's very easy. You just need to raise your hand. If you are following uh, online, uh, please use the, the chat box and we, will, we have received some, some questions beforehand and, and this, this will be uh, replied uh, as, as well. But for the time being, uh, we will um, take the, the first uh, item on the agenda I will, and I will hand over to uh, Anne-Marie 
for a presentation of our, our draft work program for next year. So Anne-Marie, the floor is yours. Thank you, Michel. Um, and uh, also welcome uh, on, on, uh, on my on my part. Um, can I have the first slide, please? You may um, you may recall that we uh, of course traditionally started the year also with a call for inputs from uh, from stakeholders. Um, uh, we have taken those on board. We have also had um, uh, discussions with our co-chairs, with our CN members uh, on all the things that are on our agenda and on our wish list. And I think uh, in the over the summer, with the incoming chair team, we have had uh, uh, quite intensive discussions on, uh, on what to choose because the ambitions are. Um, uh, there's a lot of. Uh, we wanted an ambition, an ambitious but also realistic work program. Something. Uh, if we promise something, we uh, we are very determined to deliver. Uh, but the wishes uh, far exceeded, I think, uh, what was actually doable uh, within a year. Um, just to give you an example, uh, we made a we, we made a word cloud here of all the things that uh, that come to mind when one thinks um, in in the terms of our midterm strategy, which of course continues to be uh, that Barak Ada wants to add to meaningful end-to-end -end connectivity through the promotion of sustainable competition and empowering end users. And more and more, of course, we see that a meaningful end-to-end -end connectivity is not only about telecoms networks, which are the digital, which of course form the digital infrastructure. It is also more and more on what, uh, on what in the whole digital uh, ecosystem uh, and digital markets is, uh, is going on. Uh, maybe to get into a, a more detail, because that's what we are here about. On the second, uh, on the second sheet, we, um, uh, you will see that uh, we have actually seen that there are um, uh, that when we characterize our work program, there is uh, three three chapters. One is the things that we are going to act as uh, as Beric. We will uh, finalize next year comparison tools that will help end users uh, to choose the offer on the connectivity that suits best their needs and abilities. We will act um, on devising guidelines um, which fit to the roaming regulation, which is uh, currently under um, discussion with the co-legislators. Uh, and of course, we have a, a new kid on the block, the open internet um, work that, uh, that the chairs will present later on. So there's plenty of, uh, of concrete results that we have to deliver being regulators in Europe. But also, uh, given all the trends that we see around us, there is also a huge need for to, to innovate, to innovate the way that we look at uh, the markets, to innovate our instruments and to make sure that we continue to apply them um, coher coherently and in line with our objectives. And therefore, you can also see in our work program that there's a lot of work on digital markets, on work analyzing emergent technologies, on getting a better view and grasp of the five the value chain uh, and the internet ecosystem. And lastly, um, and Michelle already mentioned it, uh, the sustainability, which of, of course, with the digital area era, uh, the other big challenge for Europe is of course, to, um, to have a, a, a build also a green Europe. And we as regulators also have to uh, ask ourselves how we can, cont can contribute to that goal. Uh, and the, in any case, make sure that we are not um, a hindering factor in that respect. So that study will be published and further action will be taken in the first half of next year. And then, of course, technological developments go so fast that we keep on learning. Um, so we will have workshops to that end uh, and studies, for example, on issues as Open RAN, artificial intelligence and business services to make sure that we build on the knowledge base that we need to be um, effective regulators. Next sheet, please. So these are um, that were kind of uh, the themes that uh, that stand out when uh, looking at the um, at the work program. Um, we think we have a, a proper mix of, uh, as I said, uh, preparing for the future, making sure that we uh, that we that we contribute to a uh, coherent uh, inter, uh, implementation of the European um, European Code uh, and other uh, regulations that we. Uh, that we are responsible for to make sure that we contribute to a uh, single European market. Um, this work program will uh, be published today for public consultation, which will last the traditional month up until the 5th of November. Um, 
more or less halfway this period, we will organize a stakeholder forum. This will also be hopefully um, mainly a live event because uh, we have uh, greeted the opportunity that uh, uh, our restrictions have been lifted to such an extent that we can actually realize a, a long held wish, I think, uh, in Berwick, that is to organize a meet and greet with the, uh, the co-chairs. Not to discuss um, already the content of any of the work that will be done, but just to get a deeper understanding on both sides, uh, on what the, um, uh, what the, what the, um, the, the, the relevant themes are uh, for every working group. And our final working program uh, will be finished by uh, the end of December to make sure that we, uh, uh, that we are in time to, get, uh, to all get prepared to start 2022. Um, whilst we are preparing our work program for 2021, I, of course, we already know who our incoming chair 2023 is, and just to help cost us along, um, he already starts, of course, his uh, thinking about the work program for 2023, uh, and will uh, also ask for input um, uh, starting also today from the 6th of October. Please do not mix the two uh, uh, when you are providing your inputs. Uh, although we will be uh, closely working together, of course, with our Greek colleagues to make sure that we have the continuous program as we have with, uh, with our Belgian colleagues. Maybe just a bit more on the uh, meeting in Brussels. As I said, the meet and greet is actually the main feature uh, and, uh, of our, um, uh, and the special feature of the fact that we have a physical stakeholder forum. And the afternoon, we will have a program where we um, again introduce in more detail than I could do today, the draft work program for 2022. We will have contributions from my dear Troika colleagues, Michelle and Dan. Uh, we will introduce, be introducing the new media board. Um, and we will have one of the studies that we had the pleasure of uh, learning about on um, uh, how to close the digital divide. Because as I said, for the ACM, the major and for Barrack as a whole, the next year will be on meaningful uh, digital connectivity, aka closing the digital divide, not only making sure that we have very high capacity networks and the rollout of infrastructure in throughout Europe is done without, with any undue hindrance, but also to make sure that that is meaningful connectivity so it is uh, accessible to end users, be they businesses or consumers. Please register as soon as possible for the stakeholder forum and I hope to see you there. That is all on my part. I will be happy to take questions later, but first we will have the presentation uh, from Paolo, uh, co-chair of the end user working group. I'm now looking at a screen where I hope Paolo will appear. Here I am. Can you see me? Can you, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear we you. can hear you. Can you? Hello? I can see you, Paolo, but I can't. I can hear you, Paolo. Can you go ahead? You, can I start? Can you hear me? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Anne Marie. Well, and uh, I mean, I will provide a quick and concise account of the report on how to handle third party payment charges on mobile phone bills. Next slide, please. Well, the report aims at providing an overview of the status of third-party payment services charges in member states. And the report provides a snapshot of those services at the moment of completing the questionnaire, which happened in October 2020. And with this regard, it is important to point out that at the moment, of when that the report that the questionnaire was completed by NRA, most NRAs or competent authorities continue to operate under the previous framework since the transposition process of Directive 2018-1972 was still ongoing. For this point of view, from this point of view, we can say that this report provides an initial frame of reference in the field of third-party payment surcharges to enable a more accurate assessment of the impact of the European code when the transposition process will have completed across member states. Um, in any case, the report also aims to 
serve as an information tool in the search for best practices regarding third-party payment charges. The report focuses on premium rate services and direct carrier building services, which are the two main ways to provide payment services through, mo through mobile phone bills and, of course, through prepaid services when, when as we all know, there is no bill. The first services, premium rate services, as we know, use phone calls and SMS and in the end the numbering to charge use the users. The second do not use numbering but, and they provide you know, payment services by means of particular and specific technological facilities and agreements among operators and providers of content services. Um, we, uh, as you will know, put this uh, an initial version, initial draft version of this document under public consultation in March 2021, and we received uh, six contributions, two from associations of operators, ECTA and MVNO Europe, and four from individual operators, Deutsche Telekom, Vodafone Group Services, Three Island, and Wintry Italy. Uh, in the end, what we have is a report that contains a lot of detailed information and arrives to be more than 50 pages long. Next slide, please. The report is mainly divided into sections. One, the first, on the institutional framework, and another one on the consumer protection measures that are in place in any member states. As the institutional framework section is concerned, we started with an analysis of the legal base, which is different. In many countries we found that is based mostly on codes of conduct. Then we moved on legal definitions of an analysis and account of what are the responsibilities of an erase. And then also we analyze which are the powers of an erase with respect to those kind of payment services, the power to collect information, power to request more information, and so on. Finally, within the institutional framework section, there's also a part on complaints, how to fill complaints, who processes complaints, and especially if complaints somehow signal that there are problems in that market. The second part is the second is on consumer protection measures. We started with a part on information and transparency, then one on the way that building uh, is put in place with regard with this kind of services, then all the management of the service facilities that all uh, final users can adopt when they want for instance, deactivate or change those kind of services, that if there are any kind of measures on blocking, and then apart from spend limits, reminds, alerts with regard to the charges that are billed to users by, for this kind of service. There's then a final part on the consent, how to express consent to buy this kind of services and the measures on how to get refunds. Next slide, please. Um, with respect to the version that we put under consultation, we included some comments which started I mean, from the six contribution that we received to the public consultation. We noted that most, well, actually all stakeholders welcome the opportunity to comment and in particular appreciated that the report is descriptive in nature rather than prescriptive and especially that includes data referent to individual country regimes. Uh, all the graphs, all the statistical information is explicitly, mentions explicitly, explicitly to which country it refers. Um, I mean, as I was saying, the document was appreciated and there's a general view that the report provides useful and comprehensive information. All stakeholders want to, st required us to stress that there is a diversity 
of national situations. And we received a few comments on the fact that they may be overlaps with, I mean, the measures that are put in place in some countries and the provisions which are introduced that the so-called payment services directly to. We clarified after having also heard the competent commission offices that actually there are no overlaps since most of the services are paid uh, at levels which are below the threshold which are included in the PSD2. Uh, of course the public consultation gave the chance to many and arrays also to comment and correct eventually all the specific and particular data that they provide. So we further updated the country specific data. And with this, uh, that's all as premium rate services payment char charges is our concern. And at this point, I will leave the floor to Veronique and Klaus. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Paula. So, um, good afternoon also from our behalf. I'm Klaus Nieminen, co-chair for the Open Internet Working Group, and with my dear colleague Veronik, we are presenting you today the annual uh, report on the implementation of Open Internet Regulation, and also our roadmap for the analyzing the ECJ rulings, and also some observations. So I, I hope you find this very useful. Regarding the report, we have um, did some restructuring to the report and also trying to make it more readable. Uh, it, it's a quite long report with a lot of details. So we can say that the NRAs have been active and uh, there's a lot of actions done during the last period from uh, um, beginning of May, May last year till end of uh, April this year. So the main body of the report lists all the, the NRA actions during the last uh, 12 months, meaning basically the monitoring supervision and, and all the guidance uh, and basically uh, judgments, whatever that's happening nationally. It also describes um, the actions NRAs have done to monitor the impact, in, impacts of the, the COVID-19 crisis to the networks. And there's uh, quite a nice uh, chapter also regarding that. I think the main, main difference is now in the annex itself. We are now trying to describe you a status quo on some relevant topics, meaning that we are listing all relevant national rules, regulations, specifications that are in force. We are, we are telling which generates are, are actually providing a measurement tool and what are the active court case, what are the court cases that are tackled in different member states. So we are trying to give you a more complete picture regarding this, and we hope you find this useful. Next slide, please. As mentioned, there are many actions. There are a lot of information, but uh, we would like to give you a couple of highlights from the report. So this is the fifth year of the application of the regulation. And, and you might assume the NRAs have been active for years. There's a lot of monitoring practices in place. There are still changes. The new, new practices are implemented and, 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 method, and the amount of methods has been increased. So we are seeing uh, still a lot of developments in this area. There are quite a few serrating and traffic management related cases handled by the, the NRAs and also a handful of form formal uh, decisions were reached. I mean, even though there's just a handful of uh, formal decisions, it doesn't mean that there, there haven't been a lot of also informal deployments. We are now reporting that uh, six NRAs uh, are reporting the, the deployments in the court cases. And that has also changed from the previous year. Last year, we were reporting only three deployments. So something also happening in this, this side. And I'm very happy to report that now, finally, all NRAs may impose penalties in a case of infringement. 
So this is something that we finally, let's say, reach a conclusion on this area. And also it's, it's notable to say that uh, networks has performed very well during the COVID-19 crisis. There have, have been no issues with the availability or general quality of internet access services. And there has been basically no use to apply the ex exceptions for the traffic management practices. So from our perspective, everything has been going very well. Next slide, please. But before going to the next topic, I think it's fair to give a brief introduction to the zero rating. As you can see, the zero rating services are offered in 25 out of 28 member states. This has a clear implications because uh, we can say that the, the very recent European Court of Justice rulings will have impacts in most of the member states, or it's very likely that they have. And as you can see, the rating services are also offered in multiple different service categories. It is something that, that the NRAs or the respective NRAs need to consider. They need to consider the, the rulings. They need to consider the implications of what actions are needed. What we do here in PEREC and what we do in the Open Internet Working Group, we support the NRAs in this task. We provide a forum for collaboration, to discuss the cases, to discuss the interpretations. And, and, and we are really trying to ensure a harmonized application of the regulation. So it is also that, that all this process takes some time to, to discuss it also with our European colleagues. We hope that there, we would have a clear common understanding, common position regarding this. And as you can see, the forum is not the only action we are now taking. There's something more in the upcoming slides. So next slide, please. So regarding the roadmap, I, I can say that the ECJ rulings, they weren't really surprising by themselves. I mean that the, the, the zero rating offers in question, they were seen to violate the regulation. That was expected. But of course, I have to admit that uh, the rationale and the, the, the considerations of the court were quite interesting. And, and also due to that fact, we, we actually posted a news item quite fast after the, the judgments saying that we need to analyze the rulings internally in BEREC and that we need to revise the open internet guidelines. Currently, the, the internal analysis is ongoing, and we really see a need for a thorough legal analysis on this matter. It's not something that can be done very quickly. It's not something we want to rush. We want to have a proper legal analysis with proper legal arguments. And unfortunately, also due to that, we can't really give you the final conclusions today. We are doing close collaboration with the European Commission, but we also would like to have your input to provide you an open and transparent uh, opportunity to provide your view on the ECJ rulings. It's already available in, in BEREC website, and it has a quite a tight, uh, let's say, timeline, but, but also more information on that later on. I would just like to emphasize the fact that we would like to have a proper justifications with the proper legal arguments with the proper references to the court uh, rulings and the paragraphs, open internet regulations and all other relevant legal provisions. And as you can see from this slide, the last bullet point is that we have agreed to start updating the PEREC open internet guidelines. And, and for further information, I would like to hand over to my dear colleague, Veronique, that will give you the further details. Thank you. Thank you, Klaus. Also, good afternoon on my behalf. We understand that uh, stakeholders are very eager to hear Barak's view on uh, this matter. As already mentioned, we are currently assessing the topic and we have already made a few observations so far. 
Barack has observed that all three judgments concern zero tariff options. That means that a zero or beneficial price is related to a traffic of specific applications that is not counted towards the data volume of a basic package. Barak has also observed that the three judgments refer to the obligation of equal, equal treatment of traffic and also is based on uh, commercial considerations, even though not all cases in hand involved traffic management practices. Also, in only one of the three cases, the national judge directly asked a question on this. We understand that the Court of Justice can reformulate a question for preliminary ruling to give a response it considered useful for the case at issue. Next slide, please. To continue with the observations, Barak thinks at this stage that it is likely that less kinds of zero rating will be allowed under the interpretation of the Open Internet Regulation than uh, in the current uh, Barak Open Internet Guidelines. However, the exact extent of the change needs further scrutiny as it brings up uh, different uh, legal uh, questions. We consider reviewing the Barak Guidelines in close cooperation with the European Commission. Also to take note of input from the stakeholders and to focus the topics addressed in the rulings. We would also like to emphasize that Barak's final view on the rulings and their implications on the Barak guidelines have not yet been uh, determined and we are currently working on it. Next slide, please. What the call for stakeholder input is about, we would like to give an opportunity for the stakeholders, especially at an early stage, to contribute to Barak's ongoing analysis. We invite the stakeholders to provide their views and to substantiate their answers with an appropriate legal justification, with legal references to uh, the current and also previous rulings of the European of Court of Justice they consider relevant at this stage. We uh, also plan to uh, make the stakeholder responses public, especially the non-confidential responses. If you consider that uh, parts or the whole response you submit is confidential, we kindly invite you to mention that when submitting your input and we will then uh, take care of that. Otherwise, we consider that the response will be published and does not contain any confidential element. We invite the stakeholders to submit their input by 20th of October at 5 Central European time to the email address indicated on the slide. We are aware that this is a very tight timeline but we would really like to offer the opportunity at this stage to the operators to contribute to Barak's ongoing analysis. And um, we consider that input also valuable and that would also allow us then to progress our internal analysis. Further information on the call for input is available on the Barak website under the section of the public consultations. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. What will happen with the Open Internet Guidelines? As mentioned, we will um, revise the guidelines and adapt them in light of the rulings of the European Court of Justice. We have agreed to limit the scope of the update to the impact of the rulings the, that the rulings have on the Barak guidance on zero rating. Limiting the scope also help us to do it in a shorter time frame than uh, when opening the whole guidelines. Details on the substance will be made available at the moment of public consultation as further analysis is needed. 
considering our usual process, there will also be an internal validation procedure and therefore we will only be able to have the draft updated guidelines ready for publication, public consultation in March next year. And we aim to publish the final guidelines and the consultation report in June next year. Next slide, please. To summarize, Barak will uh, continue with the internal analysis. We uh, highly um, we would appreciate any uh, input from the stakeholders, especially on the, the legal arguments and the legal references. We consider that input valuable for our assessment. And then we will prepare and update the Barak Open Internet guidelines. Thank you, and we will be happy to take any questions. And I hand over to Michel. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna Marie, Klaus, and, uh, and Veronique. So we will open now the, the Q uh, and a, uh, a session. Is there any question from the room? If not, uh, yeah. oh, sorry, please. Uh, hello, good afternoon. Manuel Braga, uh, Vodafone Group. Uh, I think everybody here in the room is very happy that we, we can finally meet in person and uh, we're looking forward to, to, to the Barracks Stakeholder Forum later this month. Um, I am, uh, really. Um, we have a question on, on, on the open internet uh, ruling, as, as you can imagine. We are happy to see that Barrack is, uh, is not jumping into precipitate uh, conclusions. Uh, I think we really support a, a thorough analysis of, of the judgments, which you can imagine we are also doing it and happy to, to contribute to the, um, to, the con to the short consultation on, on this one. We have a question on, on, on zero rating for public good, uh, for public goods. We, we have seen in the pandemic uh, that many operators uh, had uh, zero rating offers for public goods, uh, being it apps for schools or, or people with, uh, with less, uh, it was health, education. Uh, during and post pandemic, we kept them uh, after the, or we are still a little bit in the pandemic, but we kept them after the, the hardcore phases. Um, these are generally included as part of the customer standard tariff, so form part of the commercial agreement. And we would like to understand how, how Beric sees these kind of, of offers and if you could provide us some reflections on this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Close, please. Okay, thank you for the question. Um, first, I have to say that the, the question has been identified also by us, and it's something we are evaluating. Um, we believe that there's still some possibility for certain uh, differentiated pricing on, on certain use cases, and, and this is uh, one of the use cases we are really evaluating. I think we can't really conclude yet what is possible and what is not, but, but uh, I, I can already say that this is something we've been discussing and, and will discuss. So, thank you very much, Close. Oops, sorry. Uh, thank you very much, Close. Um, for um, participants online, please use the chat function. I see there is another question, please, already. Thank you very much, Michel. Indeed, very happy to see you in person again, long time ago. Um, I have a question regarding roaming. I understand that you are preparing a report or you will publish a report on international cooperation. And I was wondering whether this relates also to the, an initiative we understand is going on between the EU and the Western Balkan where a roadmap would be under definition on roaming. And I was wondering whether Berek is involved or um, whether there will be some discussion uh, with uh, those countries and with us, because it seems to also uh, cover European operators. So any insight on that process would be welcome. Thank you. 
I'm sorry, I'm Aurélie Lutrio from Orange. <laughs> Yeah, so, so if I understand well, your question is whether the report that uh, Michelle just mentioned would also cover the, the Western Balkans, the intra-EU one? Uh, at the moment, it, it is not foreseen, so... Whether Berek is involved in that process, in that roadmap definition or not? Um, we were involved in, in the discussions regarding the, the, the cooperation between Western Balkans and, uh, and the, the European Union, yes. Maybe to, to add to that, we are involved in, in assisting them to understand the, uh, Euro the way the European regulation works and how we as regulators uh, put that into practice. So we have had meetings which would um, this is, I don't think, a formal barrack term, but under the, under the umbrella of, say, technical assistance or learning from one another, how one can look at roaming, what is useful, and how uh, the, uh, the, the Western Balkans who aspire to um, implement um, or to grow towards the uh, European acquis in this respect, what that would entail uh, for a regulator in the day-to-day -day business. So there is exchange of experiences in this respect. Uh, and the European Commission has asked us to answer questions that our uh, colleagues there might have. So this is the extent of international cooperation. Thank you, Anna-Marie and Theodora. No other question. Uh, I had received um, a question before this, uh, this public debriefing from um, Mr. Mon Monchin Monov, Senior Manager at Huawei Technologies, and this is a question for you, Anne-Marie. Does uh, Berek envisage to undertake actions aimed at accelerating a timely transposition to IPv6 in the EU in the context of its work program 2022? Thank you, Michelle, and thank you for that question. Uh, we are very aware of, uh, of the importance of, uh, of IPv6 for the workings of, uh, of, the, uh, of the internet and uh, also the access of, uh, of end users. However, the IPv6 and its, um, and its um, uh, uh, the way it is put into practice is not within the remit of, uh, of BEREC or the, uh, or the NRAs. So it is of interest to, uh, to the people, for example, in, uh, in uh, the working group of, uh, of Klaus and Theroni. Veronique, but uh, as I said, it is not within our remit as NRAs to, uh, to be doing anything on on, um, um, uh, on enforcing or um, speeding up the implementation process. However, I do know that from time to time, uh, our colleagues in this working group uh, follow the developments uh, closely. Um, and uh, so this is uh, basically the extent to which we, uh, this will be part of our work uh, next year. We are aware of the issue and we are uh, um, following it closely. Thank you very much, Marie. I have um, another uh, question we received from Mr. Gonzalo Lopez Parayas, Head of Public Policy Internet at Telefonica. And this is for, for you, Veronique and uh, Klaus, regarding open internet. Could you please comment on the potential review of the BEREC guidelines for the implementation of the open, net in, uh, open internet regulation? Is there any formal decision from BEREC? Should uh, a review be needed? Could you comment on the process, time frame, and how uh, the IF is, is to include a public open consultation and the time frame? I think you answered most of the question, but maybe you can come back on some elements. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the question. Maybe I can wrap up the main points uh, related to that. Indeed, it has been uh, decided at the plenary meeting that we uh, shall look at the guidelines and also to uh, align these with uh, the recent rulings of the Court of Justice. And on how the changes will look like, there we uh, need further analysis. Regarding the process, um, we plan to have a public consultation and we plan to launch that in March next year and then to come up with a consultation report and the final guidelines in June next year. Yeah, given the, also the internal analysis 
as well as the internal uh, validation process, also having discussion at CN meetings, as well as the plenary meetings. That takes some time also for preparing everything. Therefore, plan public consultation March next year and publication June next year. Thank you very much, uh, Veronique. Um, as a reaction on what you said, uh, Anne-Marie, uh, I have um, uh, another question from uh, Huawei Online. Many information and suggestions have been collected by Berek on IPv6 within the year. Will they influence open internet regulation in the near future? No, so the, 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 the clearest answer is uh, no, at present we do not emphasize that, that's, that this will uh, impact the open internet regulation. We have no uh, project foreseen or report foreseen in this respect. Uh, the uh, information that we have been gathering um, in, within the, the broader questions that have been asked on, uh, on the workings of, uh, of the open internet have been taken into account. They have been discussed during an internal workshop uh, over the summer of this year. Um, we are still um, considering uh, in what way we will, uh, the working group um, should stay uh, abreast of the, the, the current developments, but at present there is no work foreseen uh, in changing the open internet regulation in this respect. Thank you very much. Any additional comments from Klaus or? Um, well, maybe I can all, only add that uh, of course, all the information we've been uh, collecting and discussing is also available for the European Commission. And it's also very much up to them to think of what, what they can use for that information. Thank you very much, Anna-Marie and Klaus. I've received a question from um, Franco Maini from Wintree. Uh, are you planning to do a call for stakeholder input on ITRI approved amendments for the roaming regulation. There are technical issues to be discussed, and uh, we are aware, of course, of this uh, development at uh, the ITRI committee, and uh, we are evaluating them for, for the time being, but there is no um, call for input for, for since, since we are still assessing these um, elements. Um, I don't see any question in it chat no more question in the room so uh, with that uh, i think that we can move on to um, the next uh, the next part the second part of the, the presentation and uh, i will uh, hand over to our colleagues uh, jorge and chiara co-chairs of the Markets and Economic Analysis Working Group. Over to you. Thank you very much, Michel, and thank you to you all for being present there in Brussels or uh, from other places. So, uh, starting with, uh, with the publications from the Minsper Working Group, as you have probably seen, uh, we launched yesterday a public consultation on the on the draft report on the regulatory treatment or, or for both fixed and mobile backhaul. So it is already in, in the in the very good side. So you can start uh, providing feedback. Essentially, just to put it in context. Uh, the motivation for the report is, well, you all know that Bajol is especially relevant for the deployment of 5G, that we, we are expecting, in fact, it, it is being deployed uh, now, and also for very high capacity networks, and especially in rural remote areas, where Bajol is less available sometimes, it's especially relevant, so... It was a, a good moment to to review on what we have done on backhaul, what are how operators are using and expect to use in the next three years backhaul. And also, as you all know, in the new recommendation on relevant markets, backhaul is for mobile is explicitly addressed. So for that reason it was also a good reason 
to review on how we are regulating and what is the situation. So what we did is to prepare two comprehensive questionnaire, one for NRAs and one for operators that we sent in April. And we had a number of responses from NRAs. It was 35. That includes all of the members. So the information you can see is from most uh, Berke participants. And we had also 60 responses from operators in 16 countries. And we would like to thank not only to associations for having distributed them, but also to, to operators because we, we ask for a very detailed information, not only on now, but also in the next future, and, and, and had a very good rate of responses. And we also organize our workshops with the, with the stockholders associations to get their views, concerns, etc. It was done in, in June this year. So our store is already open. We will be happy to to get your views on how we interpret the data, any concern, any issue, same as others, if you have uh, any confidentiality issue, uh, just let us know for all the response or part of them. And together with the final report that will be published after the first plenary next year, we will publish also the summary of responses. So if we move to the next slide, here you have a, just an excerpt on, 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 the, on the information we are providing that is full of graphs, uh, data, etc. On operators, perhaps to remark that there is no surprise, increasing need for higher speeds, what leads to a, a shift from radio links to, to fiber, and also from Ethernet active uh, lease lines to dark fever use and passive in, is infrastructure to deploy on um, backhaul lines. So but passive infrastructure is cited specifically as a future present, but also future need. And you can see in the graph that switch shift from radio links to fever. In general, we saw that self-supply and commercial input, inputs were very much used, but we should be careful because most alternative operators consider that there is not only a present, but also a future need for regulated uh, wholesale product, products. So if we move to the next slide, you can see some of the information we are providing. This is what we are providing is a snapshot on uh, what we are doing. Uh, I mean, in the report, we are not saying this is well done, this is bad done, this is just a, a snapshot. Uh, so Bajol is included in almost half of, of the countries. And uh, I think that two thirds of, of the, of the th around 30 NRAs that impose regulation in market one also impose it as an ancillary service for fixed backhaul in um, in the market. And when they are including uh, backhaul in the market in general, there are different cases and you can see, it, but in general, there is no differentiation for backhaul. It's implicitly uh, included or more than implicitly that there is not, there are no different remedies uh, for uh, backhaul when, when being used for this purpose. Uh, in the graph, you can see the, the remedies and access to passive infrastructure that is considered important. That, as you can see, uh, is considered important not only by operators, but also by NRAs, and in general, yeah, three quarters of, of the of the rates are imposing and it can be used for fixed and mobile uh, and not in all cases but you have the details in the in the report essentially as you will see in the report in Berk, we consider that backhaul contributes to to the effectiveness of our remedies and, and, and we should 
be careful, of course, and not over regulating because there is a lot of set supply, commercial use, etc., but also not to under regulate eh? because they are shown by NRA, there are cases where it is, it is needed. So, and, and essentially that's all because you have all the, all the data, information, and we will be happy to to hear from you and we would like also to thank again the operators for the large bunch of data provided and especially on your forecast for three years and that many times is not easy to to get and i think that that's all regarding uh, the report and a store looking forward to hearing your your insights so I give now the floor to Kiana for the, the other two reports we are publishing. Yes, thank you very much, Jorge. So on the first slide, please, um, we have uh, submitted the, the draft report on the regulation of uh, digital gatekeepers uh, in March to public consultation for one, and a uh, one month and a half. And we have received uh, 16 responses uh, from uh, telco operators, uh, audiovisual uh, sector established platforms and challenging platforms. So it was useful to have both sides um, on this and also from civil society representatives. Um, so the, the responses were uh, very rich and very comprehensive and we would really like to thank all the respondents for the insights and all the details that they have uh, they have provided and today we are published uh, we are publishing two uh, different reports uh, one on the outcome of the public consultation where we explain uh, all our position on the responses received and then a second one uh, uh, Berwick report on the ex ante regulation of digital gatekeepers which is the then the final report integrating uh, all this uh, this feedback that we received, and that, as you will see, is uh, a very rich and uh, uh, compared to the to the version that we had before. So it was uh, uh, showing that the the inputs we got uh, was uh, was very very uh, useful for us. On the next slide, um, we can uh, we can see uh, a general overview of the responses that we have received. In general, uh, we, we observed that there is a strong support uh, by the respondents for most of our our proposals and uh, also for the relevance and uh, the legit legitimacy of uh, Berek in uh, contributing to the debate on the, the DMA. Um, we are trying to summarize in the slides, of course, it's always difficult to summarize uh, such responses, but uh, if we have uh, to say a few words for each of the, of the uh, categories of stakeholders who responded, uh, the, um, from the telco sector, uh, we, we had uh, feedback which was uh, very much in line with the Berek uh, views, um, especially on uh, the uh, involvement of NRAs and Berek in the DMA. Um, from the audiovisual, we had some uh, uh, insights from uh, sector-specific problems that we tried to address and discuss in our, um, in our group as well. Uh, from established platforms, um, we have uh, uh, received comments on how or the sector or the complexity and the, uh, the, the fact that it is very dynamic and fast evolving and that a careful assessment would be needed uh, before any regulatory intervention and also supporting a case-by-case -case, uh, approach. From challenging platforms, uh, we see that there was a call for an intervention which was uh, considered as very much uh, needed and uh, which needed to be reinforced also in the proposals by the European Commission. Um, and that uh, current uh, obligations uh, uh, should be complemented with uh, remedy tailoring like uh, Beric is proposing and also with the end user protection. Um, and then we were um, uh, calling for a uh, regulatory, a broader regulatory uh, dialogue, uh, which is something which was supported by the challenger platforms and also by uh, civil society representatives. Uh, from uh, civil society representatives, we have, uh, they also supported the end user protection uh, inclusion in, in the DMA, and they were warning against the exclusion of NICs uh, from the DMA and also proposing some additional uh, measures on uh, privacy and interoperability. 
On the next slide, uh, we can see how all these points were included. So here is just uh, to, to let you know that there is an overview in the report with all uh, uh, the proposals of BEREC. Uh, so you can find this table in the report, which will help uh, to have uh, an overview and also to guide you through the report, uh, um, uh, the final version of the report. Then on the next slide, to summarize our proposals, um, so if we focus on the scope and the designation, so we clarify uh, that the NICS, we are not against the, the NICS uh, inclusion in the DMA. What Derek does is to explain uh, uh, that these two tools are actually uh, complementary, so the DMA and the ECC, because there are some provisions in the ECC which are already applying to NICS, that they are uh, complementary, and then for regulatory certainty, the, the, um, uh, the provisions which are already existing uh, should have uh, priority. Um, and then uh, we also um, focus on the uh, ecosystem criterion, uh, saying that it is important uh, both for the de designation of gatekeepers uh, as a non-cumulative uh, criterion, and then also for the corresponding regulatory measures, which should be adapted if uh, they are applying to uh, gatekeepers who are part of an ecosystem or controlling an ecosystem. Uh, on the regulatory measures, uh, we clarify that uh, we uh, support the current uh, framework, uh, with Articles 5 and 6 and with the obligations in these uh, two articles. We make some concrete proposals of, uh, on how these articles could be implemented. And then we say that there are additional tailored remedies uh, which could be added and when they could be added. And we say that it should be used, this remedy tailoring that we are presenting uh, should be used when there are uh, the harmful behavior are not effectively addressed by the, the current uh, articles 5 and 6. And also for more technical measures, because we see that sometimes there is a need for uh, considerations on proportionality of the intervention and also and especially the correct tailoring, because when it is too technical, uh, if it is not correctly designed, then it would just risk that the, the uh, measure is not working. Um, and also we add this point about end users, so to protect their interests and to make sure that there are some problems, some issues which are only affecting end users, so which are not necessarily affecting business users or potential competitors, which are still addressed by uh, the DMA. Um, on the dispute resolution mechanism, this is one of uh, the points that uh, the proposals of BEREC and we have clarified how this could work in practice. And uh, finally, on the advisory board and national support, while we, uh, as we have always said that the, the um, intervention should be at the EU level, uh, we explain also what are the benefits of having uh, an involvement from uh, national independent authorities, uh, given their existing skills in ex-ante regulation. Um, I think it's uh, all from my side, uh, so I will give the floor to Begonia and Julia. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chiara. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Also on uh, the Statistics and Indicators Working Group on behalf. My name is Julia Zaim Grigore, and together with my colleague Be Begonia Garcia Marinoso, we are um, co-chairing this group. Uh, today I'm going to um, walk you through the um, recent changes and recent activities that the uh, CAI um, the expert working group has been working on. And in particular, uh, I will present the final report on harmonized definitions for indicators regarding over the top services and at the same time, the outcomes of the public consultation. If we can go to the next slide, please. Okay, so as you already know, um, the objective of this report has been to identify and define relevant indicators uh, which are uh, useful for NRAs and also proportional to collect. The focus of the report has uh, been uh, always the same uh, on a number of independent interpersonal communication services and on video streaming services. Um, the draft uh, report was publicly consulted in spring this year, and then recently the, the final report has been uh, published already on the BEREC webpage. Next slide, please. Um, concerning the feedback from the public consultation, uh, we would like to take this occasion to thank the stakeholders for, for their input and for the very comprehensive uh, written submissions that we have received and which we have also considered thoroughly. Uh, we have received nine responses from the following stakeholders from Deutsche Telekom, ECTA, ETNO, Telefonica, Vodafone, Digital Europe, 
Facebook, Netflix, and we also had a um, confidential submission. Despite the difficulties, um, we would say that um, the broader views which have been exp uh, expressed by the stakeholders are uh, support regarding uh, Beric's attempt to harmonize definitions of NIC services and also the fact that NRAs should follow Beric's guidance. At the same time, um, the stakeholders have also appreciated the metrics included um, in the sense that these are the ones that they also use in the ordinary course of basics and therefore not imposing an undue burden in order to, to report on this data. At the same time, there was also the mention that NRAs should exchange data reporting uh, practices with the European Commission and also other public institutions. And there was broad support for further BEREC engagement with respect to um, NICS metrics and also um, regular updates of this indicators list, which represents a minimum list um, for, for now. What is also um, worth mentioning is that one of the stakeholders um, expressed um, the wish for a higher level of ambition regarding this work. And um, in that respect, more NICS related indicators should have been included and also more regular data collection should have been recommended. Um, concerning the video streaming providers, particularly, uh, they urged NRAs to be cautious in requesting information, as this should be just on an exceptional basis. If we can go to the next slide, please. Okay, and in this table, we have included an overview of, of the, the final list of indicators, which is uh, proposed by BEREC at this stage. Um, and what I would like to, to comment upon shortly is the, this is to be found in the report in Annex 1. This is where you have all, also all the indicators listed. And on the recommendations, which also have uh, been featuring some changes compared to the, the version which was uh, put under public consultation. Um, so in, in the case of NICS, um, for now, BEREC recommends uh, quarterly data collection process and also what's of also um, an issue of novelty is the fact that uh, we have divided for active and registered users um, the the indicators for uh, business users and let's say non-business users and in order to to distinguish between them for uh, practical purposes Beric has also included a definition for a business user for for the purpose of this report and then uh, concerning video streaming services, um, what it's uh, noteworthy is that um, depending on the type of services, either a subscription video on demand services or transactional or electronic sell through services, we have different indicators. Uh, so the first two indicators here refer to the subscription on um, subscription video on demand services then the number of content of pieces sold and the number of registered users refers to the transactional video on demand or electronic sell-through services uh, and finally uh, the number of mon monthly active users uh, refers actually to the users who purchase the services bundled with other non-entertainment services uh, and concerning the revenue indicators, they refer to all categories of, of, um, of uh, video on demand services. And um, again, the recommendation um, is that uh, the data, these data requests are exceptional, as also stakeholders have pointed out. And uh, precisely because of that, BEREC does not recommend any periodicity. So NRAs are, uh, um, can act on this flexibly and request data when, um, when needed and reasoned, of course. Um, and I think this is, this is all from, from my side. So, uh, Michelle, uh, oh no, one, one more slide, please. Yeah. Um, other conclusions that Barak re reached uh, is that no data traffic related uh, metric is proposed. Um, and I think in that respect, I may recall that um, we, Beric has had um, some particular questions in the public consultation. So in the first form of the report, there were no, uh, no insights on that, but just these questions. And after uh, having analyzed the answers, there is no um, data traffic metric. 
and also Northworthy um, Barrack will follow up its work on NICS and also um, an assessment, it will uh, do an assessment of the related data collection practices in, uh, in the upcoming year. So thank you for, for your attention. This is all from our side uh, and I'm happy to pass over to, to Michelle. Thank you very much, uh, Julia, uh, Jorge and uh, Chiara. So uh, this is the second Q&A session. If you have a question in the room, please raise your hand. If you have a question online, please use the chat function. Yes, please. Anton Horshkov, uh, Deutsche Telekom Group Public and Regulatory Affairs. I have a question to Chiara and Jorge uh, regarding the backhaul. Um, if you could elaborate a little bit on the grounds uh, which you took into account in uh, making your assessment. Because on one hand, uh, well, uh, you cite concern of the alternative operators you know, who say that there is a need now and maybe a need in the future for more regulation, uh, which is, of course, an important statement, but um, it looks a little bit that it has some flavor of uh, a self-serving statement because well, they'll probably be the main beneficiaries of that. But on the other hand, in contrast to that, there have been generations of uh, technologies coming over the last uh, two decades, and especially 3G and even more importantly 4G, have been uh, increasingly data hungry. And well, still, um, despite that backhaul has been in many countries unregulated, especially the mobile backhaul, well, we haven't seen any substantial market exit. Um, so. Um, um, are there any drivers behind that uh, other than, um, you know, the requests of um, those who will benefit from the regulation? Thank you very much for your question. Uh, Jorge or Chiara? Yes, yes I, can, I can answer that. I mean, what we are saying there, the, the driver is just the input received from uh, from operators and i think that on that for example we are clear and you can see in the report that of course the view from those uh, the, the incumbent let's say operators the incumbent in the fix having uh, a comprehensive network etc is very different eh, to the to the ones of from uh, from alternative operators but what we are doing there is essentially to show what they are saying. So it's not a better conclusion uh, based on a comprehensive analysis on uh, on a thing where, where there is backhaul available or, or not. I mean, it's the stakeholders' view, and we have tried to differentiate in the analysis, as you will see there in the report, or probably you have seen the views from that incumbent operators, from alternative operators. Um, but it's just what we have received uh, the, the views. Okay. Thank you, Jorge. Other questions? Yes, please. Thanks also, Deutsche Telekom, Jakob Greiner. Question to, uh, I believe, Chiara. Um, on the report of ex ante regulation, is it planned that um, Barrick now continues also to engage in the legislative process, so to say, stating not only the opinion, but also commenting on what the European Parliament, what the Council uh, is doing in the next couple of months? Thanks. Thank you, Jakob. Chiara, please. Thank you very much uh, for the question. So, of course, the BEREC, all public, all uh, documents prepared by BEREC and the proposals are publicly available, and we are always uh, happy at the disposal of uh, uh, European institutions to uh, explain our proposals in details, how they could work, how they could be implemented. Um, so, it is really up also to the uh, to the public in, uh, to the EU institutions to uh, um, to tell us where we could uh, we could help uh, more, and uh, we are uh, always engaged 
engaged in uh, in making sure that uh, that these proposals reach uh, the the right uh, people. So we will be we will keep being engaged in this uh, in these discussions, and we are also uh, working on uh, work streams which are uh, connected to to this one as well. Um, and it is, for instance, we are working on the on a report on the uh, internet ecosystem analyzing all the different elements of the ecosystem and uh, what are the uh, competition uh, dynamics uh, of the different uh, elements and also uh, potential bottlenecks in terms both of uh, um, economic uh, thinking and of uh, technical uh, issues. Um, so for sure, Beric is always uh, uh, is still uh, engaged in this, uh, in this kind of, uh, of thinking and analysis. Thank you, Chiara. More questions, reactions? Nobody, not in the chat. No, last chance, last call. No, okay. So we've come to, to the end of this uh, public uh, debriefing. Many thanks to, to all uh, participants, uh, online participants as well, and to, to all the presentations, to all our, our dear uh, co-chairs, colleagues. Who have been uh, here and uh, and so um, don't forget to register to the stakeholder. Yes, there is one more question. Oh, sorry, I've been too too quick. Oh, yes. Yeah, there are several questions coming in and we are still working with this hybrid system so um, and with passing on questions from chat boxes. So I, I will read them out this time. We have a question from Yves Blondel. Um, could you please define alternative operators in light of the, um, in relation to the point being discussed on mobile backhauls? So I think Jorge, this one is for you. Yes, thank you, Yves. Uh, well, you have it in the in the report, uh, but it is uh, uh, when we refer to, on the contrary, to incumbent, is the incumbents in, in fix owning the, um, the the fixed network. Uh, but you have it in the in the report, but it's defined on, on, on the contrary, uh, on um, which one is an incumbent. Uh, that is based on the position in the fixed market. Okay. Thank you, Jorge. I have one more question received from Oliver Fuch from Telefonica, and this is a question to Begonia and uh, Julia. Can the, the co chair provide some more details on the timeline and manner in which? It will conduct its follow-up work on NICS metrics and who will be able to participate in this process. Does Berek plan a follow-up in 2022 on video metrics? So uh, timeline, manner to conduct the follow-up of NICS metrics, who will be able to participate and is there a follow-up for next year? on the video metrics. So, Julia or Begonia, over to you. So, I could uh, I could take this question and then, Begonia, if you would like to add something, you, you can, uh, uh, you can, of course, uh, intervene. Um, uh, in principle, uh, this, uh, this workflow is already included in the BEREC work program, uh, which is under public consultation. And um, there will be two, two directions that the BEREC, the follow-up, will, uh, will work on. Uh, one of them is uh, concerning the um, revenue models and the revenue metrics for NICS services. And we will try to look as good as we can at business OTT, at the business models of OTT and um, which, um, re which kind of, of metrics would be, would be appropriate to, uh, to report uh, regarding revenues. And the, then the second, uh, the second aspect that the report uh, will look at is the current practice of data collection from NICS. So what's the current, uh, current status quo and uh, which kind of information is already collected by NRAs? Um, this will be uh, a report which is envisaged for approval in uh, P4 
2022, if I'm not mistaken, and we also uh, envisage a workshop. So there will be a workshop open to also with the stakeholders to, to discuss all these issues. Um, and to then on the um, video streaming metrics, no, we, as it currently stands, Berek is not um, uh, envisaging any follow-up work on the um, work stream, uh, on the video streaming metrics. Bonia, Thank you, you very much. Would Begonia would add something? Would you like to add something? No. Workshop okay. is in the second quarter, so to be expected around May, okay? May next year. Okay. So, no more question no okay i reiterate my thanks to everyone to every participant also my call to register timely to the stake of the forum on the 28th of this month I, we really hope to, to see you again in, in person and the next public debriefing will be on the 15th of december in the in the afternoon as well so many thanks and take care see you soon <laughs>